that um, I do have a good level of immunity. Uh, but the virus is not just not going to, uh, you know, it, it has holds no bar really. The virus can just go into anybody. I, uh, you know, have been doing even pranayama and breathing exercises far uh, earlier than everybody else said. Like I, I actually am certified uh, Pilates teacher also. So we know about lateral thoracic breathing since decades. Um, the thing is that. Uh, uh, you know, um, we have a lot of athletic reserve and uh, it, uh, this is a lesson for everybody. It was 15 days since I had stepped out of the house. I really don't know from where the virus came. So it can, you know, you, you need to be actually paranoid about your hygiene and cleanliness. And Hi Rita and welcome to the show. Welcome to the Healthist podcast. You're with me, Karnveer, and uh, it's so nice to have you on the show, uh, not only an IFBB and a super achiever, but also my uh, schoolmate. Uh, so uh, it's absolutely wonderful to have you. So, so, you know, because I can't list all the things that you do, why don't you go ahead and give a short introduction about all the things that you've been doing in your life? Yes, thank you so much. And it is, it is indeed very endearing to have uh, you have an interview with a schoolmate, no doubt about that. And I'm sure everybody relates to that. Uh, so I am uh, Dr. Rita Jarrett, the IFPB Figure Pro and the IFPB Pro League International Judge. And I have been, uh, you know, a bodybuilder representing India, one of the first few uh, from India. And um, I'm not a medical doctor. I have been awarded an honorary doctorate by the United Nations uh, Diplomatic Mission uh, for Women and Child Development. And I'm a World Peace Ambassador with the Walk Hard uh, Foundation affiliated to the United Nations. And I write uh, fitness articles and uh, I'm currently authoring a book. I'm in the process of it, uh, you know, uh, where I'm talking about how to converge various modalities of fitness and their history and how we can just correlate some things which are absolutely contradictory. Because I'm also a Bharatanatyam dancer and a student of Kalari Bhaiyat. So I have quite a lot of physical activity and I like to learn about it. And um, in fact, uh, I'm actually planning to have a YouTube channel eventually so that I can, you know, give back uh, to the world in the best possible way. So oh, great. So uh, Rita, you were hit by COVID. Yes. And you were hit quite hard. And uh, so tell us about your experience because I'm, I mean, in some ways you are lucky to be alive. Absolutely. And, uh, but a lot of people see your pictures, see you, you are an IFBB pro, pro you are a bodybuilder, you are a fitness enthusiast. You know everything about you know, fitness and immunity, and you should be the most, this one of the safest people, you know, who has been doing fitness for a long time. It's not like you're popping in um, pills right now. So what exactly happened and how can a bodybuilder, uh, you know, get a bad case of COVID? Yeah. Yes. Uh, so um, as you, as I told you that I have a lot of physical activity and we to be able to perform that, uh, we, we really take care of our health and our capabilities because uh, the body is our instrument. And, um, and certainly I do feel that um, I do have a good level of immunity. Uh, but the virus is not just not going to, uh, you know, it, it has holds no bar really. The virus can just go into anybody. The only difference uh, that can happen is that the viral load uh, might just get a little lesser. Um, so uh, I was, I, uh, you know, have been doing even pranayama and breathing exercises far uh, earlier than everybody else said. Like I, I actually am a certified uh, Pilates teacher also. So we know about lateral thoracic breathing since decades. Um, the thing is that, uh, uh, you know, um, we have a lot of athletic reserve and uh, it, uh, this is a lesson for everybody. It was 15 days since I had stepped out of the house. So they say that the incubation period is about 14 days. So maybe the incubation period was more in me, but I really don't know from where the virus came. So it can, you know, you, you need to be actually paranoid about your hygiene and cleanliness. And you don't know to what extent you might need to go. You know, did you ever go to a crowded place or did you go to a place where you feel that the virus may have come? What's your wildest guess? The wildest guess is uh, 4th April, uh, where we had the national championship at Talkatura Stadium. And yes, that was an absolutely uh, crowded place. But uh, it was 4th April and then... Uh, I had my first symptom on 19th April 
and after that on 11th april i had a bharatnatyam exam it was online i was doing it with the tamil nadu university and then i was studying and i was just thinking of uh, getting a vaccination and that's my second mistake that i did a bit of procrastination so i would like to in fact you know uh, admit some of my mistakes so that you know uh, people can get from it it's really a message uh, that uh, i was procrastinating because a lot of people who got covid after the vaccination um, they their uh, symptoms were m- much milder and it, they weren't it wasn't so intimidating um, so <clears throat> when i got the covid it was on 19th i remember very clearly i had a bharatnatyam class and i felt that i really need to polish myself and even after the class i was continuing so with the kind of physical activity i have i generally have learned to live with a bit of soreness and exhaustion and it's a part of it especially when you are competing at an international level in fact you are always susceptible to chronic fatigue um so at that on that day i felt that i'm getting tired and feeling a little feverish and i i tell myself sometimes that i need to you know mellow down and so i you know just uh, had my dinner and went to sleep and uh, i had a mild fever i didn't think of covid at all because i'm so careful and the next day i got up with a you know a little higher fever it was uh, something like 99 but one thing we must all keep track of even if we don't have covid is your basal uh, you know metabolic your resting heart rate your uh, basic blood pressure the basal uh, blood pressure and your basal temperature my temperature is always low my heart rate is always below 60 it's in the 50s always and my blood pressure is is low because of the you know you get a kind of a myocardial hypertrophy you have a uh, you know a good heart rate because you're always uh, you know you're used to a lot of physical activity and exercising so the heart is very relaxed it doesn't have to pump too hard uh, now when i had a temperature of 99 point something i was worried and uh, you know that was the first time i realized i took everything so much for granted uh, that was the first time i realized that uh, when i called everywhere for testing those were the peak days where they were actually the medical system was absolutely overwhelmed and we were hearing and it was just like a story another person's story for me that uh, you know we don't have hospital beds and all that i wasn't able to get a test done and they told me the earliest test they can do is on 4th may and it was just 20th april on that day so wow. um, you know i spoke to my uh, brother my cousin brother in us he's a doctor he calls me uh, every evening there it's morning there and uh, he when he called me he said that you know you, if you just check your oxygen and my oxygen like always perfect 100 uh, was like somewhere like 93 94 on that day so he said that you shouldn't be waiting for a test or anything like that just start the medicine so that was one good thing i did that i took the paracetamol and it since i was it wasn't confirmed that it is covid i started on the antibiotic you know the azithral and um ivermectin is uh, generally because these are not established but they're taking it to uh, you know minimize the viral load and uh, for 5 6 days it went on and i was fine and my fever went down and i thought i'm fine Uh, but now this is another very classic thing that if you are very strong and you're an athlete your uh, inflammatory response because the autoimmune system kicks in and after 5 or 6 days people think that you know it's i'm fine and everything is fine my virus has gone down and they they feel absolutely fine and that is the happy hypoxia phase that sets in and uh, uh, the the there's the immunity uh, the immune system kicks in and then there is an inflammation so there was a little cough and everybody in the world you know started telling me adrak and uh, you know the ginger honey and all those home remedies and all these days i had been doing like everything uh, i i have been taking this uh, raw turmeric and milk and honey concoction since years it's not just today or for the covid or since i mean i've been doing all these things you know these kitchen herbs and everything since years uh, so i i really wish to say this that people should not uh, this is a different kind of cough it's not the usual uh, you know viral cold common cold it's because your bronchioles and the airways are getting constricted and it's you cannot solve it with the ginger honey concoction or the kada you, you you can take it it will make you feel better but when your oxygen levels are low and your pathways are constricted 
uh, that is really not the solution. I didn't get one, uh, you know, one molecule of phlegm or mucus at all. It was absolutely dry cough. And I kept on coughing and I initially I did take that and my upper chest was aching so much that I felt that I'll get bruised from within. And uh, my brother, when he called me, he said that, look, you, I think you should uh, take steroids because this could be the inflammatory response and that can only be solved at this time. Only two things will work and that is the steroids and the anticoagulants. So I was uh, health conscious that I am. Uh, that's my third mistake that I thought that I shouldn't be taking steroids uh, because uh, it would have a side effect. So I evaded it for a day and that kind of magnified the problem. So I realized that when you weigh the benefit versus risk, then uh, you have to understand the benefit is being alive. So the next day I, uh, I, had, I took the dexamethasone and half an hour I was fine. And then I took it for another six days and then it subsided and I stopped. And maybe the steroid content was there. So for two days I was fine and then again I had a relapse. So, uh, you know, this was a very difficult process for me. I finally got myself tested. I got a CT scan, I had COVID pneumonia. And uh, so I, I finally got a doctor, I got a consultation and he advised me medicine. And then uh, again, after I was quite well after four or five days and I was told to make an exercise video. And then I went all out thinking I'm fit. And then again, there was a relapse. So these are the reasons, you know, the young people think that we are fit. And these are the, exactly the classic points uh, where they go wrong. So I don't mind admitting it because people should learn from my mistakes. You know, wise man. If you had to put uh, point by point your so-called mistakes or learnings, uh, what would they be? Uh, the first thing is do not uh, procrastinate vaccination. Uh, the second thing is that uh, get yourself tested as soon as possible. You need to rule out. Third is don't listen to the WhatsApp university. Uh, fourth is uh, that after the fever subsides, look for the autoimmune re inflammatory response. There is a gap and there could be happy hypoxia. The residual oxygen, uh, you know, we have athletic reserve and the lungs have great capacity to it takes over. So don't wait for that. Uh, you must not hesitate in taking steroids and anticoagulants when it is needed. And the last thing is that never uh, take your recovery for granted. You must, um, you know, give it the rest and the pneumonia to subside and heal. Otherwise it will just get worse. So what was your experience in terms of like, how did you manage your house and all? Because I think that itself is another story altogether, right? I mean, uh, <laughs> once this is no ordinary disease. I mean, if you break your leg, uh, you 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 have a nice vacation for two weeks where everyone pampers you and takes care of you and lots of people come to visit you. Uh, but this is a totally different experience. Yes, yes, absolutely. Um, yeah. You see, I live with my son. Um, in uh, my son has autism, and the moment I discovered, I have a uh, another house, you know, which was uh, originally my father's house. So I sent him there with a, he has a caretaker, obviously he needs somebody to look after him. Uh, he's grown up, he's like 30 years old and he needs somebody there. So, uh, you know, the, the, my caretaker was cooking and he would give me meals here. Uh, initially because of that uh, doubt uh, for, a, you know, persistent doubt in my mind about chronic fatigue, I thought that these are good five days for me to rest. And, you know, uh, it kind of, uh, I took it as a vacation. I watched television, I did all the things which um, I never did. And uh, I was having fun that it's fine. Um, so, but then, you know, eventually uh, my weakness became so much that even reading and writing was putting so much stress on me that I would just want to lie down and uh, everything was taking its toll on me. So uh, that was very difficult. And then all the apprehensions about deconditioning, uh, because uh, being an athlete, we, we need to again restart. So, and gaining weight with the steroids, uh, so these are all the apprehensions that I have. Uh, I never felt any weakness at all. Like it was only the lungs and the respiration and the cuff. I never felt any weakness in the muscles. Um, as I said, we have athletic reserves. So uh, I'm, uh, my concern was always this, that I need to 
get back to my schedule because that has that is what has kept me going you know in my well in my 50s you know it's that has kept me going so that's been my concern but otherwise i didn't feel uh, you know that kind of weakness which everybody else has so how do you think uh, you know mentally also i think this is as much a mental battle as much as physical battle uh, so how did you what would you like to what would you advise somebody mentally uh, because even without covid i think people are pretty lonely these days yes and uh, you know isolated fearful uh, yeah. you know because Actually, i i love being lonely I, i have so much work to do uh, we are you know kind of um, um, uh, overwhelmed by social media and uh, there is a lot of work that you know you can explore life um uh, as i said my son has autism and i spent nearly 20 years doing nothing except looking after him i started everything much much later and i feel that i have a lot to uh, tell us a little bit about your tell us a little bit about your life uh, because i don't think anybody knows about you know you you were one of the pioneers in ifbb and people i think you I, if i may think you must be one of the first women to uh, get an ifbb professional ifbb pro card of india so tell us a little bit about that journey oh well you know uh, after i passed out i was uh, when my son was diagnosed with autism um, my mother too had schizophrenia i had a very very difficult childhood and then uh, when you know i had dreams of bringing up my son in my own way because there were so many things that i didn't get as a child and uh, when he was diagnosed with autism it really felt that my life has come to a dead end and i spent you know i used to go with him to school i was like kind of determined and people you know uh, uh, late 80s and early 90s they really thought i'm mad because uh, the doctor said that he wouldn't be able to speak uh, so and he was very clumsy and he was in he was kind of disturbing the school and i was like determined uh, fighting it out that he has to go to a normal school he has to complete his education so i was like writing down his ncert books and uh, you know fighting it out you know in this socially and in every way so it was a huge huge battle so i was like kind of giving 36 hours and 24 hours it was a huge uh, period of two decades and then he was about uh, uh, when i was he was about 15 16 years uh, he said that uh, something from from on his own like i was always telling him do this or that don't do this he said that i want to be muscular like uh, you know like rithik roshan and you know he started all that so uh, i took him to the gym and that was actually i went to the gym for the first time and um, you know everybody was opposing me women should not do heavy weight training and then you know i had kind of become such that whenever i say something correct everybody i know it and i'm the only one who says it and everybody is opposing me so it was a battle and i had to be, keep my son there i couldn't leave my son with that disorder alone in the gym and um, i was always battling it out getting a lot of attention because he was sort of clumsy and everybody thought who is this woman trying to do weights and you know so i studied about it i figured it out and then i took it to that level that i traveled abroad i traveled to us i traveled to many places i learned how to go about it and then i competed and there was no competition in india so i traveled uh, abroad and competed fighting with everybody in the universe <laughs> and then you know there once i got my medals uh, today we have so many girls you know it's it's a, it's such a joy i sit there as a judge and we have hundreds of girls and then they look up to me and they give me so much of love it's very very gratifying so that was very very special well you have been a absolute uh, you know pioneer in uh, in the field I, I, you you only told i think 20% of your story right now because i know that you know you you literally packed your own suitcase and you reached the uh, you know competing places and you yes. oh yes, uh, yes. Oh, you know we can be hours about it <laughs> yeah. actually there is a uh, there is there are two things on the cards because some people who have seen me since childhood and they saw me on facebook so they approached me for um you know for this uh, Uh, for making a film a uh, movie on my life and now they they're converting it into a web series uh, for netflix and um, and a book that is being written uh, probably they've got acceptance from penguin and um, definitely you know after this pandemic subsides they're going to go further with it so a lot of lot of work has been done already on that uh, since about 2 years so uh, let's see you know because um, i i'm sure that there is a lot of message 
So when when I was uh, down with COVID, you know, when it comes to the uh, mental aspect, there were there were a couple of things which I'd like to say that uh, the first thing that would come to my mind was uh, that what would happen uh, to my child if I'm not there. So that was the you know primary worry. Otherwise, I I wouldn't bother about anybody. So I uh, it it really I developed insomnia. You know, I wouldn't be able to sleep because I thought that if I sleep. there's nobody else i'm all alone uh who whom do i call for help because if i'm awake and i feel a little uncomfortable i can always i know i'm aware and conscious of it but when i'm sleeping i might just pass away so there were silly things i did like dress up well and sleep and you know wear a good night dress and right from all those silly things to all these serious apprehensions about my child uh no, you know there were things at all i mean there uh, when you are into it there uh, i mean there are really really scary uh, moments when you are like alone in that room and looking up to the ceiling and you know with this yes yes virus inside you yes <laughs> yes yes absolutely so now what would you what would be the lesson that you would give uh, to somebody to manage their mind not only in not only in corona but you know in any uh, we, we have some tough times which are happening and i feel that are going to happen because a lot of people have lost their jobs lost their earning members you know husbands have lost their wives some people have lost their parents so you've really battled uh, your mind and you know you you've been out there so tell us a few lessons about how do you manage and how do you become a mental champion like you are yeah when i lost my father you know that was a, one of the most devastating moments of my life because uh, he was always there to mentor me and you know put things in perspective um otherwise i wouldn't have been able to fight for 20 years you know just like that it was a huge help um so uh, when you don't have control you know no matter how much i cried he won't come back so i feel that when you don't have control over something then you just you know need to feel that okay my parents continue to live through us and so keep them alive uh, you know in your own way um so when you lose somebody uh, and then you know uh, even in life time is a huge healer if you feel that you cannot live without it uh you know uh, if something happens somebody you know like petty things like somebody may say something to you and you are disturbed for 2 3 days uh it has happened to me over and over millions of times that i know for sure that no matter how painful it is uh time you know with passage of time it will die down no matter how terrible it is and we should always work on things we can control so the focus is on the positive and the constructive side and when what we cannot control we cannot control anyways um uh, so but when it of course it comes to economic uh, dependence uh when you lose somebody who is the earning member of the family uh then you know these uh, spiritual and philosophical things have no significance and at that time we need to teach ourselves uh very unfortunately that we need to be able to live a life that is simpler and so keep your mind open always that uh you know we must be in a position to acclimatize ourselves to any situation so we must keep ourselves strong and fit and uh, never go for complete dependence throughout our lives not just the covid era we should always visualize that if i ever have a time i should be able to survive in the minimum so we must keep ourselves that's why a lot of people do household work even when they have servants so um, right from that to developing uh, your skills polishing your skills uh so that you know your economic dependence is not complete and if you have somebody who is dependent on you uh, get yourself insured and you know always work on this uh, for years together i have worked on the process of uh, creating something for my child uh, so that when i am not there what will he do and <laughs> it should be a streamlined source of income along with his safety so we need to accept the reality uh, there is just no other way out but uh, definitely time is a huge healer we must have faith uh, you know and then uh, let go that things we cannot control you are truly inspiring thank you <laughs> uh, 
I want uh, I, uh, I to end this. Uh, you know, we could keep talking for a long time, but uh, I think we need to also keep time in mind. Uh, to end this, tell us about your future plans. I know that there's going to be a book on you, a movie on you, but you are also uh, if I you you also give nutrition advice, fitness advice. Tell us all the things that you do and how can people reach out to you or connect with you. Yes, um, I already have, uh, you know, I have a website and uh, um, I, I'm there on social media, you know, by Rita Jarrett underscore IFBB Pro and I'm there on Facebook. Uh, so you can approach me, you know, in any way. And, uh, um, you know, so I have clients whom I give consultations, some people for their lifestyle disorders and weight loss and a lot of athletes who wish to compete because that's a very, very specialized journey. And especially for women, they don't have, uh, you know, the kind of teaching, you know, it's just the men teaching the women and telling them uh, all things and not in perspective. So um, I, do, I consult people and I'm, I'm writing my own book, uh, you know, and I also, I wish to uh, go further with the Bharatnatyam and Kalari part and uh, really put them together. Uh, I'm working a lot on my YouTube channel, I, I would love to get views, but I, my primary purpose truly is to, you know, spread uh, the knowledge. I feel I have learned a lot. I have traveled the world. I've studied, I've written so much. Uh, but when I write, you know, big articles, very few people actually read them. Uh, you know, this is one of my concerns. Uh, so this is what I'm uh, primarily working on. And uh, I also uh, help parents who's, who have children with autism. Wow. It was a pleasure talking to you, Rita, and uh, Dr. Rita. And uh, thank you so much for coming on our show. You are totally inspiring. And, uh, you know, all the energy and force for you for the future. Thank you so much. And it was a delight talking to you. Thanks a lot. So, ladies and gentlemen, the winner of the women's figure goes to athlete number Two, zero, one. And, and since our athlete is from India, may I request all of us to please stand for the national anthem. Can we all stand, please?